For the next stage in your cocktail journey, I'm gonna take you down the old fashioned rabbit hole. Now, for those of you that know me for rum, I am, I'm not including rum in this. I'm purely talking about whiskey. And yes, I am gonna be using Jack Daniels. I've got a bit of Jim Beam here as well. But you know, this cocktail, the old fashioned, is all about whiskey. The way I kind of describe this cocktail for just to kind of dumb it down, it's kind of like, a step away from drinking neat spirits. It's adding a slight bit of sweetness to it and a slight bit of flavor, but it is that kind of entry level to sipping spirits neat. But the trick with the old fashioned, or even the rum fashioned, but the trick, the trick with the old fashioned is not to sweeten it up too much. I see it too many times where people add loads and loads of sugar uh, to it. You really don't need to. So coming up in this video, like all the other previous videos, I'm taking you down the old fashioned rabbit hole. I'm gonna come up with it because it's three ingredients. I've got plenty of ways to it kind of inspire you to riff this up. Plenty of variations. We're gonna be talking about the base spirit. We're gonna be talking about the flavored sugars and I've even brought a selection of bitters in from home. Cocktail fans, welcome back to the Drink Stuff YouTube channel. We are your one-stop shop for all your cocktail needs, except for the booze. My name's Steve the Barman, and I'm just purely here to help you on your cocktail journey, giving you fun riffs and variations to twist up your cocktails, impress your friends and families, or even better, put some fun variations on your cocktail menus for pubs, bars, restaurants, and hotels. So then without further ado, let's crack on. Let's show you how to make kind of like the base old fashioned, if you like. Yes, in the US there might be slight variations on this, but in the UK and pretty much around the world, it is so simple, so easy. So uh, I'm gonna use, I brought, in, I brought in my posh Jack Daniels from home, my gentleman Jack. Uh, I'm gonna do a, a 60 mil, a double bubble. Uh, if you wanna do for like 50 mil UK, that's absolutely fine, but I've got 60 mil, I, I love this jigger. So it's the Barfly um, stepped jigger, so I love it. It's 60 mil, two ounces. So that's what we're gonna use for that. So I've got 60 mil, double bubble of your whiskey of choice. Now the whole point of this uh, is that, you know, you can add, you can use whatever whiskey you want, whether that's Jim Beam, you know, entry level Jim Beam, entry level Jack Downs will work in this as well, or you can step it up to your really decent expensive whiskeys as well. So I've got my base whiskey. Uh, the next ingredient you want is your kind of sugar now. In years past, we would use a sugar cube. We would douse the sugar cube with the Angostura bitters, and then we would uh, kind of stir it down. We, you know, high-end cocktail bars, hotel cocktail bars, probably will stu still do that. But we're talking for you guys at home, we're talking like chain pubs, bars, restaurants, all that kind of thing, making cocktails accessible. The sugar cube, we haven't got time for that. We generally haven't got time for that. So it's all about sugar syrup these days. Now, as I said at the top, the, you don't want to oversweeten this sort of stuff. I think even for me, my palate has changed massively over the last year, let alone sort of three, four years. You know, I would in years past do 15 mil of sugar syrup. And even now for me, that is too sweet, way, way, way too sweet. So I kind of dial it down to like 10 mil, sometimes seven and a half mil. But the thing is, it's all about your palate. If you want 15 15 ml of sugar syrup in your cocktail, you go for it and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. If you've got a sweeter tooth, that's absolutely fine. But the, but the thing I always say, it's a lot easier to sweeten a cocktail up than it is to kind of sour it back down or make it less sweet. So always err on the side of caution. You can always add more sugar if you need to. But for me, I'm going literally, uh, I'm just going about 10 ml, about seven and a half to 10 ml of just plain gone. That's what I've got here. Uh, just, you know, whatever sugar syrup you've got at home just there. And then the bitters, as we always say, I haven't really talked chatting about bitters too much here because all my bitters collection at home, uh, but I have brought a selection in. So we're gonna be talking about bitters a bit um, in this video. But Angostura bitters, pretty much the staple you can get in, in most supermarkets in the UK. The way I like to describe them, probably not the proper way of describing them, but the best way so it resonates with you guys, is see that as your salt and pepper. You would add salt and pepper to your food to kind of uh, adjust the taste. And bitters are the same in drinks. They are our seasoning, okay? So whether you want to add one dash, two dash, three dashes, that is completely up to you. I'm just going to split the difference. I'm going to go two dashes of Angostura bitters. It's just a collection of herbs and spices. Angostura is a secret recipe. No one knows. It's quite alcoholic, 44. 44.7% yet, 44.7% ABV. So they are quite strong. They just add a punch of 
flavour, say herbs and spices in there. Now, with the old fashioned, uh, excuse my fingers, I'm just going to use my fingers. All it is, is just literally stirring it down. We want to chill the cocktail down and the stirring will add um, kind of a little bit of dilution. The water, obviously the ice melting will add a little bit of dilution. But the, how much you stir is up to you. How much dilution you want to add is completely up to you. The hardcore spirit drinkers will just chill, stir it enough to chill it down, maybe like 10, 15 seconds. Sometimes you might want a slightly longer drink and you might stir for like 90 seconds. There's no right or wrong. Again, it comes back to your palate. If you want a stronger drink, stir it down less, okay? So I'm just gonna sort of quickly stir this about 10, 15 seconds or so. Right, and then when you've hit your, hit your level of dilution that you're happy with, I say don't water it down too much you know you want it, at the end of the day it's all about neat spirits the old-fashioned okay you don't want to detract from that too much it will be obviously quite a boozy cocktail but then to serve it up um, obviously what would be nice in the trend is these days is a nice rocks glass with one single cube of ice like a big chunk a big ball a big um, cube of ice whatever you've got but obviously, I've just got supermarket ice here, and it will do exactly the same thing. Just kind of single strain, that in there. And then, as, uh, as I kind of like to preach about on this channel, yes, um, sort of a traditional garnish with that would be the orange peel. But I don't, I like to do sort of faff-free and stuff. So this is where this kind of product comes into its own, the ODK dehydrated oranges. You can dehydrate them yourselves at home. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think, I haven't got the, we got the oranges out, oh, the oranges are here. Um, these are slightly different, okay? So I, you know, I don't, I don't give these that much love on this channel because I, the difference between fruits for drinks and dehydrated, these are freeze dried. They add bursts of flavour to drinks, so they're perfect for like things like gin and tonics that goes into it. But when you want to decorate and just garnish, like just to make your drinks look pretty, the dehydrated for me is the kind of option that you want to go for. But freeze dried, perfect for to add to drinks, to add flavours to drinks in there. And then the other, uh, the other garnish we want, obviously, is uh, oh, maraschino cherries. You can use those sort of um, neon red cherries if you want, but it's nothing better than a proper maraschino cherry in there. And that, oh, I love the cherry juice. I love the cherry syrup. Oh, you can just use the syrup. You know, I'll come on to that, but you can just use the syrup in your cocktails as well. Um, but that is as simple and as easy as the old-fashioned needs to be. And that is proper delicious. I say my palate has changed massively over the last couple of years. I love drinking neat spirits these days. As I say on my channel all the time, I've got to that stage where I can't handle long fizzy drinks anymore. So I'm all about the neat spirits. The old fashioned, the rum fashioned is that it's boozy. There's a slight hint of sweetness in there. Obviously, if you want it sweeter, as I say, add more sugar. But you've just got that little bit of seasoning from the Angostura bitters in there. It brings that whiskey to life. Whether you're using plain old Jack Daniels or Jim Beam, or whether you're using a really nice, decent brand, Woodford Reserve or something like that, it's completely up to you. But it's simple, three ingredients, and it's a lovely, lovely drink. So. The purpose of these videos is like giving you inspiration and variations. Where do we go from here? As I say, there's only three ingredients and we can attack each one of the three ingredients in turn. So the, the first way I'm going to do is the obvious way. This probably will be, you know, it'll be really dumbing it down for you. I appreciate you. most of you are going to know this, but it's simply, you know, it's the same with any spirit category. We've got lots of different flavor, the different variations of neat spirits going on at the moment. So, you know, as I say, let's let's get the other, the, the two, you know, that you probably have lying around. Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, they, they are kind of go-tos and all that. Let's put them on that side. The brand that I've got here with all the flavors is Jack Daniels, but Jim Beam very much do a similar sort of thing as well. In fact, Jim Beam have got a couple of different flavors that you can kind of use. Simply, you know, just swapping out your base spirit for something like, all right, that's the rice. The rice is going to give you a very different kind of uh, mouthfeel and taste to normal sort of whiskey bourbon in there. But the flavors, got the honey, the apple, the cinnamon, or the Tennessee fire, whatever you want to call it. Jim Beam have got peach. They've got red stank, which is cherry. They've got something, oh, well, they've got the honey as well. I think they've got something else. Uh, other markets around the world, US and Canada, we get into the maple, we get into the vanilla, we get into all the other different flavors that haven't really hit the UK. But 
it's just that simple. Take out that base spirit and swap it with something like this. They will all work. Peach will work, apple will work, honey will work. It's just gonna give you a slightly different flavor but all of them taste great. Then obviously the next way we go is attacking the syrup, the flavored sugar. There are tons and tons of ways we can go here. I've got a selection I'm just gonna go through very, very quickly because I wanna talk about the bitters in here. I know I get a lot of questions about cocktail bitters, so there's a, quite a few of those coming up in a second, but let's just get the syrups out of the way. I'm gonna do it brand by brand sort of, so I'll just get the morning ones up first. I've just picked four here. Um, I would say five, but yeah, the fifth, the fifth one I was going to use, the bottle's empty. <laughs> well, there we go, we can have it there, vanilla. Um, so uh, what have we got? I can't, can't see the labels here. So I've got peach, I've got gingerbread, I've got maple spice, and I've got black forest, which is chocolate and cherry in there. Again, chocolate's going to work on its own. Cherry's going to work on its own. You can use the cherry juice from there, like a couple of bar spoons of cherry juice and you've got that. We know they're gonna work because, like Jim Beam, Red Stag is black cherry. We know the peach is gonna work because Jim Beam peach, you know. So it just becomes a, a cheaper and a quicker way of flavoring up spirits. Instead of going and spending like 20, 25 quid on different flavored spirits, you could just have a bottle of sugar syrup or various different bottles of sugar syrup that will keep on your shelves, long life shelf stable. And of course, that's in evidence from the William Fox range I've picked again. I've We've got pretty much all their flavors here. I've just grabbed six randomly and I realized I've doubled up on the ginger, uh, gingerbread now um, because I had the morning one out there as well. Hickory smoke kind of gives you a lovely sort of, uh, you know, that barbecued smoky fine thing to a whiskey as well. Cinnamon blackberry. Blackberry we know is gonna work. Blackberry and whiskey is a work. Don't be scared of using like berry fruits or even, I perhaps wouldn't use, go down the passion fruit, the mango and the tropical fruit ways, but sort of berries in that raspberry, blackberry, blueberry, blueberry we've got there, they're all gonna work. You know, it gives that fun fruit to us. But as I say, I'll come on to the cola in a minute, but as, you know, literally start off with, start off with seven and a half to 10 mil. And you can always add another five mil and then another five mil if you really, really need to. But don't go crashing in with 25 mil of sugar syrup in an old fashioned, because I promise you that's gonna be too sweet. It detracts from what the actual cocktail is. But to come on to the cola, the cola is a great one for this. Whiskey and Coke. We know that works really, really well. You know, it's just the, st the standard sort of drink, Jack Daniels and Coke, we know that. The cola syrup for a cola, cola old fashioned is a genius masterstroke. It's just a great, great flavor, it really bursts the flavor, but you could have so much fun with these. But then not to leave like uh, ODK out either. You know, they've, again, we've just kind of got vanilla and I've got the caramel there. They're gonna work, I know I've already mentioned vanilla. I'm not convinced I would ever make a, a sort of a, a, an old fashioned, I was gonna nearly said rum fashion there, an old fashioned with some of the purees. You could try it, like the wild berry might be a good shout. The cherry that I've got at home would be a good shout. The blueberry might be a good shout. They're just a bit thicker and add more fruit to the cocktail. There's no right or wrong. You go for your limes, you do whatever you fancy. But I kind of think for me personally, I would go syrup based more than sort of puree or fruity mix based. Um, I've got a couple of, I'm gonna film another cocktail. I mean, I've got a couple of others down there like coconut and elderflower. I'm not necessarily convinced that elderflower old fashioned would work, but you let me know in the comments below. If you've ever had an elderflower old fashioned, let me know in the comments, I wanna hear from you. Well then, and the final way to flip up the old fashioned is the bitters. And for me, probably the most fun and exciting way. Uh, I've talked about bitters quite a bit. Um, as I say, I've got a big old collection at home. There's probably about 50 different bitters in here. And I brought a selection in and I'm just gonna go through um, a couple of the sort of brands and kind of look what to look out for. As I've said, you know, bitters, let's just, let's just get the Angostura ones out side by side. I haven't actually got the chocolate ones because I'll be honest, but the chocolate bitters I've got already knock spots off the Angostura ones, which is kind of a bit weird to say that, but they are really, really good. So, um, but Angostura have got the chocolate bitters as well. As I say, highly alcoholic, most of the bitters, uh, and they just add a punch of flavor. Yes, on face value, you might think they're quite expensive, but the bottles will last a very, very long time, considering you're only using like a couple of dashes. That's, you know, I've never actually looked to see how many cocktails you would get out of that, but I would say 50 bare minimum, probably close to 100, you know, and I know that's a big jump, but I've never actually done it. But if you think, how big's the bottle on there? 200 mil, and you're probably adding a t two mil? 
maybe to a cocktail two three mil by the time you've done the dashes you know that's going to be close to 100 cocktails so i don't know but they are value for money they even the 20 pound bitters i still think are great value for money so we've got angostura there we've got the bitters the norm that no one knows the recipe for that it's just a secret blend of herbs and spices we've got the orange bitters and we have got their chocolate bitters or cacao i think they're actually called so that's angostura now the next brand i've bought in are Fee Brothers, I keep wanting to say La Fee because I keep having absinthe in my head, but Fee Brothers. Now, the, the thing to note with these, they are great flavours, they really are, but they are less alcohol based. And for me, what I've noticed with these, yes, look, they, they are going to keep for a year at least. But what I've noticed with these, the longer you keep them, the more the flavour does fade away because alcohol is a preservative. So some of these, for instance, um, Let's take that. The toasted almonds are 6.6. .6. You know, 40% are some bitters like there. So we've got um, we've got 6.6 .6 there. I've got plum bitters, which are 12%, and we've got cherry bitters, which are 4.8%. They are going to keep their flavour for a certain amount of time, but don't expect them to last years and years and years, okay? But there's a whole different range of Free Brothers. They really do pack a punch. They're probably the cheaper brand on the market, but that's purely because the alcohol content is a lot less. Uh, next up, we've got Pacheur Bitters. Again, it's kind of like a, a sort of semi-secret recipe in there. They are another different style of aromatic bitters. So aromatic bitters being Angostura. Um, different brand, famous for the Sazerac cocktail. You wouldn't use Angostura bitters in a Sazerac, you would use Pacheurs. Uh, they kind of give that very different vibe. It's kind of like when you say aromatic bitters and you kind of put them all in the same clump them all together it would be how can i explain it to you it'd be like taking the amaro category or even rum to a certain extent but if you take amaro where you've got jägermeister classic is classified as an amaro campari is actually classified as an amaro you know they like chalk and cheese they taste completely and utterly different so don't expect all aromatic bitters to be a substitute they all have completely unique flavor profiles okay so one angus one aromatic bitters won't be a direct replacement for another one you have to taste them i've got three i've got um a brand i'm going to come on to i haven't brought them in um, but i've got another brand of aromatic bitters here or at home, I should say, that are completely different, again, to them and the Angosturas there. So, you know, pay shorts are a great shout. They're a big fan, uh, big, lots of love in the US for them. All around the world, they're a huge, huge deal. Um, but they own pay shorts only do that one flavour that I know of. Then I'm going to come on to my favourite brand of bitters. Well, they are my favourite brand. Now, I've got another, a couple of different flavours uh, that were one-offs from other brands, but as an overriding brand, I love Miss Betis Bitters. Canadian brand, lots of different flavors, 12, 14 different ones at home. Uh, so I've got the orange ones I brought in, which again, you know, orange is gonna work in an old-fashioned, yes, absolute treat in there. Uh, chocolate bitters, these are my go-to chocolate bitters, absolutely love these. Uh, cola bitters, give you that cola vibe, from like the sugar syrup that I gave you without the sweetness, you know, so it's kind of a cola bitters. I really do love them. And then I'm not sure which order these, smoke and oak, and then these will be the black pepper and cardamom. Again, really, really crazy. But then if you go and rum, uh, rum fashions at home, I've got pineapple and star anise. I've got strawberry and mark one. Mark one is another type of pepper. Um, lime leaf, grapefruit, uh, Mount Fuji, which is uh, burdock, chrysanthemum, peach and yuzu you know all those different kind of flavor profiles you would just these are pipettes you would probably add 10 15 20 drops uh, as opposed to a couple of dashes but it's just a whole different world of bitters out there so that's Ms. Betters bitters probably the most expensive they are highly alcoholic will hold their flavor for a very long time and then just to give you a quick overview of the other brands that I've got at home, we've got Bitter Truth there and there. So I've got Jerry Thomas Bitters again is another kind of standard uh, called for uh, in cocktail bars, Jerry Thomas in their own right. Got Creole Bitters. I love that kind of South American or, or what, what the South, what's it called? I don't mean South America. I mean the South of the US, uh, the sort of the Creole cuisine and Louisiana and all that sort of stuff. I love that kind of vibe of there. So they're really cool bitters. Uh, the other bitter truth ones I've got down there, I've got wood and I've got nut bitters. Again, perfect for old fashions. And then we've got bitter 
bar stewards, should we call them? They've got some great ones there. I've got cinnamon at home and I've got coffee here. So coffee bitters in an old fashioned, a tree. And then maybe not so much for, um, for whiskey, but definitely for rum, the Ella Makuli tiki bitters, cinnamon, clove, allspice, you know, really does bring a rum fashion to life with tiki flavors there. So that's bitters. So as I said, you know, right from the top, it's just three simple ingredients. You know, the, the whiskey, your bitters, your sugar, three simple ingredients, but you can go totally off piste. Imagine, just for pure inspiration, I used an apple whiskey with, um, what should we go, a cinnamon sugar syrup, and maybe, uh, what should we go, and maybe chocolate bitters. Apple, cinnamon, chocolate, what did I say? Apple, cinnamon, apple, maple, maple, that's what I said. Apple, maple, chocolate bitters, crazy. What combinations are you gonna come up with? Drop into the comments below, let me know. And if you do post any photos anywhere, especially on Instagram or such, do tag us in at Drink Stuff because I wanna see what you've got in your lockers.